one animal stands out the most and that is our elk. Um, if anyone has been to the park before and seen any of the keepers when they head up to feed her, she is quite a chatty animal. Um, she does know her name and she will respond <laughs> when keepers call her and they chat away to her. Um, so yeah, she definitely knows her names. But most, most animals know um, the keepers coming when they call them, they know that that means come over. But she is one of the characters that, yeah, responds to her name specifically. <laughs> I mean, all the animals are really rewarding when you get that trained behaviour. Um, but recently, I suppose one that sticks out is our bison. So like most animals, they have to have annual health checks and do have annual vaccinations and things for medication. Um, and we managed to train both of our individuals uh, to voluntarily take a hand injection, which was brilliant um, for it to be under trained behaviour because it was nice and calm, no stress, um, and just a really positive experience for both the keepers and for the bison themselves. So yeah, I think that most recently is the most rewarding um, animal training that we've done here. It's probably been when training our young chuff chicks. It's really important to record our training sessions so that you can see the little mistakes that we make as trainers and the little advancements that the animals make. So I was trying to set up my camera um, and they'd been really good up until then um, in their training sessions. They'd made quite a few advancements. So I was like, great, they're in a really good place. I really want to get a good video of this. And one of the chuff decided to stand in front of the camera the whole time. Um, so I just had this headshot of the chuff, like the penguin out of Wallace and Gromit, just in front of the camera. Um, so he ruined my shot, but it was brilliant footage for me to laugh at. Okay, so hypothetically, the animal I would like to take home or have at home would be one of the bears. But I don't think, A, that my garden would contain them, B, that my pond is big enough, or C, that I have enough honey. Um, so all animals are individual. There's not a sort of one size fits all. This is how you train this um, for this animal. So we have to assess the species that they are and then their individual personalities and temperaments. So the prime example of that is our bison. So one bison um, to get them to participate in their hand injection training. One, their reward is food. So their reinforcement is food. They're more than happy with that but the other bison has to have his food first and he prefers to get a little face massage as his reinforcement. That's, that's what he wants in order to stand there nice and calmly. So you have to take it on an individual basis. Um, you can't just, uh, uh, yeah, one size, like a recipe is not like that. Yes, um, so here at the zoo, we, or in, in many zoos around the country, uh, husbandry training is the, is the phrase that you will hear in terms of the training that we carry out here. A lot of dog training or pets at home, you, you concentrate on obedience. Um, so that's your sit and you stay and you wait. Um, at the zoo, it's to try and alleviate stressful situations and to increase um, participation with the animals in their own care and that's quite often involves their, any veterinary practices or um, when we're moving them so that the animal is aware and has a lot more control over their situation so it's all to be positive and less stressful and you can use that for your pets at home like your dogs um, for example when transporting your animals in to a crate to go to the vets, so normally cats or small animals. You can um, try crate training them, so the uh, reward-based training, so that when they go in the crate, they get a nice little reward or reinforcement, and then you slowly increase that so that they accept you shutting the door. You can also train uh, behaviours, particularly for dogs and those that get annual vaccinations, for example, so that they can um, will voluntarily take a, a needle. Uh, and that takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, but it just means that it's a lot less stressful for the animal um, and you have that nice communication between you and your, and your pets at home. So yeah, COVID did, like with most zoos and with most of our jobs here, it did have a massive impact in um, our daily routines. So it did mean that we had to stop or pause some of our training just because of staffing levels. And now, because we're returning to normality or some sense of normality, we're just starting to pick it up again, uh, restart previous training that we had started before, and then also start new programs. So yeah, we're, we're just getting out of that, um, of that delay. Um, so this has probably got to go to the chuff chicks again because 
it's not so much they have massive personalities, but there are so many different personalities in that enclosure all at the same time. It's, um, it makes it very fun when you're trying to teach them a new behaviour. Um, doesn't always go as smoothly as it can do because they all interfere with each other, but yeah, definitely full of personalities in there for such little birds as well.